Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, a star-studded lineup and a massive turnout anticipated for this weekend's 12th edition of Jazz and Creole. Prime Minister Skerritt warns against trivializing child maintenance issues and Dominica brings down the curtain on a four-day training program on soil diagnostic testing. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Hey, you feel that? You feel that? Hey, you feel that? Somebody say Welcome back. As the Jazz and Creole Weekend draws near, preparations for the 12th edition of the event are coming to a close. The lineup for this year's event will include Black Violin from Fort Lauderdale, Felicia Ross, Dominica's very own signal band, Swinging Stars, and the Island Jazz Collective featuring Josie Pavola. The anticipated festival is expected to take a creative twist with the inclusion of the Kid Zone this year a fashion segment as well as the ultimate VIP experience with HHV We Church. Festival and events manager at the Dominica Festivals Committee, Mrs. Natalie Walsh, says the rapid increase in ticket sales is, is an indication of a massive turnout for the event. Twelve years ago, we had jazz and Creole, and I believe that the crowd was less than a thousand patrons. This year, we are proud to say we will have thousands of patrons at Cabrits. I am proud to say that the ticket sales, the numbers are adding up every single hour, every day. We have very few VIP tickets left. Very, very few tickets for VIP left. Destination Marketing Manager Ms. Kimberly King says events like Jazz and Creole are an important tool for the growth of Destination Dominica. We are thrilled to be hosting the 12th edition of Jazz and Creole at the Cabrits National Park Portsmouth and recognize the importance of events and festivals as an important pillar and growth strategy tool for Destination Dominica. First presented by Discover Dominica Authority in 2010, Dominica's Jazz and Creole is a fusion of jazz music with Creole music, uh, food, culture, all in the family atmosphere of Fort Shirley in the Cabrits National Park. The event will serve as an avenue for showcasing local jazz artists next to regional and international performers. For the first time, a band from Venezuela will be performing in the Jazz and Creole main stage. Ambassador of Venezuela to Dominica, His Excellency Jose Moros, says this is a great way to exchange culture between the two countries. They are great. They are very excited. And, and they are very energetic as well. They come to have fun. They help come to exchange culture with the other bands and with Dominica, which is at the end uh, our most important uh, goal. You know? uh, Venezuela and Dominica as members of the ALBA organization, the main goal for us is to have an exchange, uh, to have union and integration among our peoples and being culture 
the most important expression through music is for us a great opportunity to accomplish that goal, but also to have fun. Jazz and Creole is a family-oriented event with a fusion of jazz and Creole music and exquisite foods and culture. This event was conceptualized in 2010 and is hosted annually except in 2020 and 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Jazz and Creole returned in 2022 and is expected to be even bigger this year. The concept of the celebration this year is welcome to Portsmouth, the land of jazz and Creole. The Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt is passionate about parents taking up their responsibility of caring for their children. The Prime Minister's stance on the issue was evident during a debate on the Maintenance of Children Act when he pushed back on statements by one opposition senator who appeared to make excuses for delinquent parents. The Prime Minister cautioned that such sacred and important issues should not be trivialized. He made the point that in today's society, the rights of the individual is often dominant or rather prominent and takes center stage, but the issue of personal responsibility is hardly ever discussed. We have to be careful in this society that there's people like to talk about rights. This is my rights. But what is the most important thing that's missing in society is an important word called responsibility. And we have to be careful that we don't give, keep giving people um, 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 excuses for the way they behave. You can be as financially poor as you may be. That does not take away your responsibility. You can be as rich as you are. That doesn't take away your responsibility. And we have to be careful with this constant effort or push to give excuses and justifications. The Prime Minister says the court understands a parent, due to financial circumstances, being unable to provide adequately for their child. But it's unacceptable to use this as a basis to abdicate their responsibility altogether. The Prime Minister says the laws themselves are not meant to solve all the problems associated with delinquent parents, but it's a starting point. We don't say that this is going to solve the problem completely. It is a framework, it is, it, is, it, is, it is a piece of legislation that will help us define our behaviors. It requires now, Mr. Speaker, the entire society, starting in the parliament. But the Prime Minister says parliament cannot make excuses for those who choose to abdicate their responsibility. There are many children who have been subjected to this. You may not have been subjected to this, but there are many children in Dominica who have been subjected to this and they know what life has been and they know what life is for them. He says the law does not discriminate when seeking redress through child maintenance cases. We must not believe that this is only men who are fought. Hmm. I know of some brave men who have taken the mothers to court and whose mothers are now making their payments for the children. The Prime Minister raised the issue of parents who receive child maintenance but use that money for other purposes. We know in society sometimes the parent gets the money and it's not being used on the child. So you're getting the money, the child is not at school because the child has no breakfast, the child has no shoes, but you got the money. So we we put in the legislation to ensure that when you get the money, you use it for the purpose intended. A four-day training program on soil diagnostic testing for the development of a national soil health plan came to a close on Thursday, April 27, 2023. Soil testing is meant to provide an accurate assessment of the soil's fertility to make fertilizer recommendations. With increasing awareness of fertilizer effects on environmental quality, soil tests can also be used to determine whether fertilizers or manure should not be applied. The program was hosted by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Blue and Green Economy, and facilitated by Dr. Gaius Eudoxi. Forty extension officers participated in this training. Agricultural officials from Cuba, including the Vice Minister of Agriculture, the Director of Plant Health and Plant Protection, the Director of Livestock, and the Internal Relations Officer in the Ministry were also present at the ceremony. 
Dr. Gia Sudoxi, who is a soil si science lecturer at the UE St. Augustine campus, is proud to see a group of extension officers who truly care to contribute to the agriculture sector. I am very proud and happy to see a group of extension officers who have a true interest uh, in their profession and who recognizes uh, the value of their profession and what they can contribute uh, to the agricultural sector, particularly, obviously, of Dominica. I think from even the reflections that we had uh, going through our course, that everyone feels very confident in the knowledge and skills that they have gained. I feel confident in overlooking um, the officers and seeing how they would have addressed uh, some of the challenges that they would have faced going through it, that I feel confident that they have now gained that knowledge, gained that skill, that they can certainly service uh, the farming community and other stakeholders that may, be re that may require diagnostic analysis. Crop and soil scientist Dr. Almario Kazemi describes trainings like these as relevant if Dominica is to increase its food security and boost its export capability. Um, we recognize that the ability for us to test not only of the health of our soils, but the nutritional status as well as the quality status of our foods becomes integral in terms of increasing exports. So the soil diagnostic testing and development of a national soil health plan is most relevant. Because as early as 1947, the US President Roosevelt, I think, yeah, coined the phrase saying that a nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. And that is most relevant in the terms of us having the ability to maintain the productive base and like it is actually coined in our national slogan, after God comes the earth, gives us that relevance in terms of the protection and the responsibility that we are actually vested with in terms of ensuring that our productive systems are actually healthy. As part of the Emergency Agricultural Livelihoods and Climate Resilience Project, the ministry targets interventions that will enhance the ministry's capacity towards improved delivery of its mandates and services. One of the area of areas of focus is the improvement and modernization of the extension services of the Division of Agriculture. Procurement officer in the Project Implementation Unit, Mrs. Lisa Massicott, says the PIU, or Project Implementation Unit, is pleased that it was able to financially support this very important training. To this end, um, the PIU is very elated that it was able to facilitate the collaboration with the University of the West Indies in the sum of U.S. $108 thousand three hundred and fifty dollars or approximately two hundred and ninety four thousand Eastern Caribbean dollars towards the delivery of the in-service training um, of strengthening extension officers in climate resilience practices for improved agricultural production. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Reginald Severe, says this soil testing training is important as soil is the foundation for a thriving agriculture sector. It is the bedrock upon which our agriculture is formed. What goes on in our ocean space, in our marine life, it all depends on what goes up upstream in, in our agricultural sector. And so whatever we do as it relates to our soil, not only going to affect our agricultural output, but it's also going to have a direct impact on our marine space and our ability to have productive sectors across the agricultural sector. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. Then it's time to soak in the amazing voice of Haitian-American songstress Felicia Ross. From Fort Lauderdale, Florida, experience the energetic performance of the hip hop duo Black Violin. Yeah. 
Stars in the Curtains, we take it local. Dominica's youngest and the baddest, the Signal Band. Something stronger than preacher, man, deeper than religion, best. Visit DominicaFestivals.com for tickets and event information. Circle the date, April 30. It's Jazz and Creole in the Nature Island, Dominica. Welcome back. The enactment of the Maintenance of Children Act of 2023 passed in Parliament this week brings the laws of Dominica into conformity with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. This law is one of five family-related pieces of legislation which the government of Dominica has brought forward designed to establish a progressive and visionary framework to tackle the critical issues of child welfare, parentage and inheritance or inheritance rights. Dr. The Honorable Cassandra Williams, Minister of State in the Ministry of Health and Social Services with special responsibility for senior security, children at risk, gender affairs and the differently abled introduced the bill. Article 7 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, CRC, which Dominica ratified on March 13, 1991, states, the child shall be registered immediately after birth and shall have the right from birth to a name, the right to acquire a nationality, and as far as possible, the right to know and be cared for by his or her parents. Part of being cared for is providing reasonable maintenance for the child. Dr. Williams says this piece of legislation addresses an issue which has triggered some combative exchanges over the years. Mr. Speaker, the existing law in Dominica relating to maintenance of children is the Maintenance Act of 1982, which thereafter received a relatively minor amendment, one of which reflects access to a child. The maintenance of children within our Dominican and Caribbean societies has often been a contentious and a troublesome issue, and one which has generated much discussions. The minister observes that the children who are often the victims of ensuing court battles for child maintenance end up in some instances scarred for life. Many of us are all too familiar with cases in our communities where fathers and mothers in some instances have defaulted on their duty and responsibility to provide adequate care and support for their children. These cases often are, subje are subject to court proceedings leading to resentment, which can last a lifetime. Such cases not only relate to maintenance matters, but also custody of children. We are likely to know of cases where children are caught in the middle of disputes between parents with the result that these children are alienated from their parents with deep hatred and animosity. She says the children suffer the most in these circumstances and their well-being and entire childhoods are sometimes compromised. The government of Dominica recognizes and embraces its responsibility to protect our children and ensure that laws are adequate to mandate that parents fulfill their legal obligation to provide financially for their children. Mr. Speaker, the court should not be the primary avenue to resolve disputes and make maintenance orders. Individuals should be cognizant of their responsibilities and so fulfill these outside a court hearing. However, the court is always available for redress. The Dominica State College hosted its annual career fair on Thursday, April 27, 2023, at the school grounds. The career fair, held every year near the end of the semester, is organized to expose students to both private and public sector job availability, as well as to give them the opportunity to present their qualifications and interests in a formal way to potential employers. Career Services Development Coordinator Ms. Elena Bowers described the fair as necessary as it gave students a glimpse into the business world. 
Now is your opportunity to see what the world of work here in Dominica has to offer and to show potential employers what you have to offer to them in the work of world. In the world of work, excuse me. There are limitless opportunities for you if you work hard and smart and if you're strate strategic. Put your best foot forward. She thanked the 26 businesses who participated in the fair for collaborating with the Dominica State College and giving the students the vital experience. To all the potential employers present, we thank you for your collaboration with us and we urge you to capitalize on the amazing pool of potential employees here today and to offer them attractive options to contribute meaningfully to your business. I look forward to amazing success here today as we, build, as we build careers and fill our human resources gaps across the island. Director of Student Activities, Ms. Ashma McDougall, says the career fair is, an important, is important as it creates opportunities for both the business sector and students. With the great support that the private sector has provided to us here today, they definitely believe in the contributions that the investments that um, career fairs like this can have on the corporate sector. We have over 26 businesses here with us here today and the importance of the career fair is twofold. For the businesses, it's an opportunity to obviously search the talent pool and as well tap into that potential talent pool here at Dominica State College. But more importantly for the students, it, op it operates as a networking opportunity. It operates as an opportunity for them to potentially identify partners, identify employers, recruiters that they can apply to. Ms. McDougall hopes to see the event grow as more students receive opportunities and experience in the coming years. We look forward to hosting this every year. We haven't had this for a while because obviously of the COVID-19 pandemic, but we are happy that we are back on in 2023. And to be quite fair, this is the year that we've had the most um, number of corporate sponsors here at Dominica State College. This event is one that we look forward to seeing great improvements for in the coming year. But what is most important today is the presence of the corporate sector and as well the students from the different schools who are coming to learn more about potential career paths that they can go into. Students of the Dominica State College and high school students from around the island participated in the fair. The government of Dominica and uh, Kenneth J. Green Limited has signed a framework agreement to initiate the first large-scale green hydrogen geothermal development in the Caribbean. The signing was made official on April 26 during the first annual hydrogen summit for the Caribbean being held as part of the 15th Caribbean Renewable Energy Forum in Miami, Florida. Minister for Finance, Economic Development, Climate Resilience and Social Security, Dr. The Honorable Irving McIntyre, Attorney General Honorable Levi Peter, CEO of Dominica Geothermal Development Company, Mr. Fred John, and General Counsel of the National Focal Point for Dominica, Mr. Michael Savre, joined the signing ceremony virtually. The framework agreement establishes a basis for these parties to collaborate for the development of a geothermal exploration and a geothermal resource concession. This, in turn, will drive the achievement of key government objectives that include the establishment of a green industrial eco-park project for the development and use of geothermal power for the production, local consumption and international export of green hydrogen and its spin-offs. The signing of this framework agreement is a momentous occasion for the people and government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. This agreement is one of the primary pillars of our green industrial development program and our transition to a low carbon economy. We are confident that this transformation will advance economic national well-being while at the same time contributing significantly to the national goal articulated by our Prime Minister in making Dominica the first climate resilient nation in the world. The realization of this program has the potential for Dominica's integration into a regional and international green energy value chain, realizing the supply of green energy commodities to the region and other parts of the world where such demand exists.
This project will complement the work that government continues to do in the geothermal sector, with major advancement being recorded on the geothermal development project in Loda. This signing today now unlocks the pathway towards further development that is expected to lead to a bankable value proposition for Dominica, allowing for the leveraging of its geothermal power to develop a scalable green hydrogen industry. This new phase in our geothermal development is building upon the experiences gained by Dominica's geothermal development company via its work in the developing development, the Rosa Valley Geothermal, geothermal Field Resource. The government of the Commonwealth of Dominica hereby expresses thanks to Kennedy Green Limited and the people and government of Trinidad and Tobago for collaborating with Dominica in this bold and imaginative enterprise. Dr. McIntyre is confident that this agreement will boost the prospects of the country's economic and national well-being. Dominica contains the largest geothermal energy deposit in the Caribbean region, and the country has the potential to develop a globally competitive green hydrogen industry. We do anticipate challenges along this journey. But we are confident that with the collaboration of many partners gathered here today, we will achieve success. We therefore call upon those present far and wide, in particular multilateral, regional, and international financial institutions and other entities along the green energy commodities value chain to join us in this journey, a journey which will allow for the execution of positive climate action to address the collective existential threat posed to mankind by carbon emissions, and also one which will also transform the lives of citizens of Dominica, Trinidad and Tobago, and the wider Caribbean region. In April 2022, Kennedy Green Limited presented the Climate Resilient Execution Agency Creed with a country assessment. The assessment focused on creating a roadmap for the utilization of Dominica's geothermal resources. The country assessment discovered significant renewable energy potential in Dominica. There are so many significant upsides to Dominica, both for its economy and its people. For the first time to be able to meaningfully look at this remarkable renewable energy uh, potential that they have been sitting on for decades and harness it for the benefit of their people and their economy and let's not forget what's driving all of this for the environment. So the next question was, well, why now? What, what's changed? Well, what's changed, as I just alluded to, is this growing reality of the immensity of the climate crisis that is upon us as a people and as a planet. Let's not forget that. That has driven this growing demand exponentially for green hydrogen and green ammonia to be considered Meanwhile, CEO of Creed, Ms. Francine Barron, believes Dominica has the transformative opportunity to become a green hydrogen producer. By tapping into our renewable energy potential and exporting to countries of a high demand for green hydrogen. In essence, Dominica can serve as an industrial center for renewable power generation, hydrogen production, and even further along the value chain into the petrochemical sectors, including ammonia, methanol, and e-fuels. The concept of a green industrial eco-park has been globally accepted as an attractive, sustainable industrial development pathway. A green industrial eco-park that integrates green hydrogen as part of the development framework can contribute significantly to the future sustainable development of our country. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.